warp stabilizer has really become the go-to tool to remove unwanted camera movement. Uh, and this is really something that happens, you know, when you've got camera movement. But if you've ever worked with a jib or a crane, um, you'll know that when you get them up really high, all it takes is like a couple of millimeters movement down to the bottom and the top is swaying several inches and it can totally blow a shot. Uh, in fact, uh, I've heard one person say that operating those cranes is kind of like Tai Chi. Mm, you know, you've got to have a certain fluid movement in what you do. And, and that's not me. I'm too much of a bull in a china shop. But what if it was the perfect shot and you can't get back to the location and it's a the middle of the night kind of shoot and that's what happened to um, Simone Smith who's a Toronto based filmmaker. She had this great shot, ending shot, big crane shot, looked beautiful but there was movement. And when she brought it into Premiere Pro to run warp stabilizer, what she found was that the warp stabilization removed too much of the nice camera movement at the beginning, um, and th she wanted to find a way to cut that in two. Now, as a software guy, I always think of, of technology as being something that um, if you're running a, a, a some kind of analysis and calculation, if you stop that analysis and cut it, there's a good chance you'll lose continuity between those two pieces. Well, as it turns out, she was right, and you can cut. So let's go have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is play back the shot. I'm just going to loop this here and show you. And this is all on the jib. And this kind of movement is nice. Even that is nice. But just at the point where the bleachers fall out of view on the right hand side and the jib moves up, there you go. There's some unwanted movement. Really easy to get that kind of movement. So. Originally, this was, I'm just going to clear my in and out here. So we've got um, nothing going. And in this shot, um, it was actually divided at this point. So this cut point between um, no effect, no warp stabilizer, and the warp stabilizer here, which, by the way, in Premiere Pro CC, you'll notice that my effects badges here are appropriately colored. So I can actually see that this has intrinsic settings over here, which is the, uh, the first settings of motion, position, scale, and this one actually has a filter. This is where the warp stabilizer takes place, and this is where it doesn't take place. The issue with not having the warp stabilization on the first one is there's scale properties. Now, this you can't get away from this when it comes to uh, stabilization. Any kind of stabilization is going to increase the scale depending on the movement of the camera. Um, more movement, larger scale as it, it scales it up. But what if you could find the scale properties and apply that? That's what was smart about Simone's uh, technique. So if we look at this uh, particular clip here, and I'll play this now so you can see a bit of the difference. There is, boom, now we're into the stabilization, and you can see a smoother shot. When I select this and open up the properties for warp stabilizer, we have uh, this set to smooth motion subspace warp, here is the money right there. Auto scale 104.1. With that value in mind, we go back to the unstabilized clip, go to scale and put the exact same value in there. Light bulb moment. Uh, when you do that, you now make it seamless between the stabilized and the unstabilized version. I've actually put these together in a side-by-side -side comparison just so you could see that. So let me just make this larger. I'm just going to hit this and play it. So remember, when the bleachers go out of view on the right-hand side, that's when stabilization uh, kicks in. We've got uh, the stabilization on the left, and it's kicking in. And you notice a little bit of the scale there? Boom. So you'll see that unwanted movement on the right-hand side. Just it ruins that most poignant moment um, of, of the exit of these two. One more time, just so you can see it. A really nice difference. You know, it just fits perfectly.
boom, just like that. So just to go back and review, that is the ungraded, uh, sorry, the uh, non-stabilized shot set to 104.1% scale. This is the stabilized shot that happened to be auto scaled to 104.1%. Not everything's gonna be scaled to that same value. You just need to go in there, peek in there, find that value, and then drop that into scale on the other clip. This is gonna solve a lot of problems when sometimes you want that beautiful natural camera movement that doesn't take you out of the moment, but you sure wanna correct that unwanted stuff when that crane is at its apex.